Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to take on a reel that I previewed a little while ago and uh, has a lot of interest in it from our viewers, so I figured I would go do this one. Uh, this is a Daiwa Emblem Z. This is a big reel. It's a 5500A, but don't compare that to, uh, to a standard 5500 reel. This is much bigger. This is oftentimes called a pit reel or a carp reel. Uh, it's got the long cast feature. It's got a high rotor on it. Uh, for um, water protection to let it roll off the side of it. Uh, very large spool capacity for deep pits. Uh, the pit being a uh, gravel pit most of the times it got filled in. We have an interesting series on both sides of this. It's a uh, line suppressor to hold the line tight. You have a little rubber uh, grommet, big o-ring, whatever it might be. It's going to hold that against those uh, those things for vibration and also to stop the line from getting trapped underneath here. It's a huge reel. Uh, it came in for service and uh, Robert sent this in and we're going to go do that service and take it apart and show you how this reel is made. On the top end of this reel, a little bit different because of, you can see the capacities and the way the rotor is set up. Underneath it's an interesting reel as well. Underneath we have a, um, a worm drive and pawl similar to uh, the Daiwa Tournament reel, also similar to some of the Shimano reels that are out there. And uh, we'll show you these. We'll show you how to take this reel apart, service it, and uh, get it back uh, fishing again. So we shall always start by removing the exterior parts. I'm going to start with the spool. And while I do that, I like to start also by thanking our first responders and essential personnel. I never get tired of hear uh, doing it. I hope you don't get tired of hearing it. But those folks are really at the, the breaking point now with this pandemic. They're in there fighting to keep people healthy and return them to health every day. And that's, that's very wearing. I personally have some friends that are doing that, and I thank them very much. If you know a first responder or essential personnel doing that, please thank them as well. All right, we're going to take the spool off. There's a lot of dirt up top here. That makes sense when you have a top drag reel like this, the water the line is coming in, the, water, the line's got water on it, it throws it, it comes into these cracks. These cracks come into the bowl here, and it brings with it the dirt and the light that's uh, been there. And there's real no, really no drainage point here, so it does accumulate here as well. I'm going to pull that off. Oh, so we have a lot of sand under here. I'm not sure if it's going to be able to be seen, but there's a lot of sand. What I recommend with sand first, uh, and actually I was talking with Cons the other day, is to take this, um, this spool here, put it in a bucket of water. And uh, the bucket of water will loosen that sand, and sand is, uh, is going to sink to the bottom of that and get most of this out of there. So we're going to go give this a good soak while we do some of the other stuff. So I'm just going to put that aside for a moment. We also have it in the bowl of this rotor, so when I take this rotor off, I think we'll, uh, we'll do that equally well to, uh, to add that there. We have a little click mechanism, which is going to ride underneath here. You can see where the grooves are in the spool. That's going to let you know that the spool is going backwards. Uh, when you uh, have the drag loosened, and it's going to give you an alert that the uh, fish were on. Good point to tell you to take pictures here. Because if you're taking the pictures, you know the orientation of this when you go to reinstall. So that comes off, and underneath that, there's a flat washer. One side of that flat washer is rounded. That was the one that was pointing up, so make a note of that as well. And if you, uh, if you like, go out to the web. Um, this one came from Mike's Real Repair. It's mikesrealrepair.com. Go get the schematic for the reel, and that'll kind of give you a what-to-expect picture of the reel before you start taking it apart. And more importantly, if you get stuck along the way, it tells you how to put it back together again if you're uh, mechanically so inclined. All right, we're going to take the, and bring this down as much as we can. We're going to remove the tie down screw and we're going to see if we can't get the rotor off with a, um, a deep socket. So there's one, screw here that can be taken off with a Phillips head or a flathead screwdriver. I use the Phillips head in that case. And off camera, but 
very important to me is a parts tray. It's nothing more than the bottom of a jug, but I do like to accumulate all my pieces and parts there so that I can take that off. That, uh, that nut can be taken off with a deep socket. I'm thinking that you can also take it off from by removing the axle shaft first, but I'm going to see if we can't just take that off. It looks like a looks to be a 14 millimeter socket, and I keep my sockets near at hand, as you can tell from just uh, doing that. There, I kind of knew that I was going to need a socket. And let's see if we can't get this off. All right. So one of the things I just learned there is that this is a reverse thread. Sometimes they'll tell you that. Sometimes they won't. But the reverse thread means that when you would traditionally tighten it by going in a clockwise manner, you're going to loosen it that way. And then you can get that nut out. And we can put that nut into the parts tray as well. Once that's loosened, then the rotor can come off. The rest of us, we're going to just, I'm going to stop the camera for a moment. We're going to go uh, soak these because I have the, the sand in the bowl here as well. I'm going to soak these, and when I get those that soak started, we'll come back. We'll show you. This is the anti-reverse gear. We'll show you how it's set up. We'll get that bearing underneath here, and we'll do the top end as well as the bottom end of the surface. So let me just pause this for a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did was I filled the bucket. I have a little pail. Filled it with water. I put the drag adjuster, the rotor, and the uh, spool in there. We're just going to let it do its work. If it doesn't do its work as well as I would like it to, what we're going to come back and do later is we'll go put that into an ultrasonic cleaner to vibrate all of that sand out. Uh, that's always a good way to do that as well. Take a picture here. Pictures are worth thousands of words, right? There, at least that's what they tell us. And just uh, make sure that you see how all of this stuff installs. So the first thing you want to do is I'm going to go into the case first. I want to turn my reel handle. And if this is spinning, it means I have a through handle with a screw cap. And you want to remove it. You probably want to remove it anyway if you're not familiar with the reel. Because what will typically happen is uh, sometimes the manufacturer will hide the screw back there even though it's, uh, it's covered and the cap isn't moving. But this is a quick way to tell how the handle comes off. If it is spinning, it's certain that you have a, a through uh, screw there. So we're going to take that and put that into my parts tray. Then we can remove this. This pulls out. And this is a collapsible handle. Push the button and it collapses. So I'm not sure when this reel was serviced. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put a spot of oil around those pieces just to let that seep in there and provide some, uh, some protection in a little bit. Coming back up top here, this one wants to come out. So let's take it out already. This is your anti-reverse setup. Notice that you have a plastic uh, sleeve up top and a metal sleeve below. That's opposite the way that those pens come. So just take a note. And then this one usually gets confused, or it can be very easily confused, because you have a, a little plastic Teflon ring washer here that goes under that assembly. So make sure that you note that. Otherwise, you might have a little tightness in, your, uh, in the performance of your reel. If you uh, if you don't pay attention there, and then I'm just checking here to see with that anti-reverse override if I can get to that screw. I think I can. That's going to be close. You don't normally need to to deal with the anti-reverse overrides and like if you can pull your your pinion gear screws out that's holding the collar uh, without disrupting that. We may have to take this off uh, if we do. We do. So what? All right. Uh, let's go to the case then. So the case, the first thing I think I'm going to do is take this bump guard off. Now the one that I pulled has a two-piece bump guard. This only seems to be a one-piece one. This is a Series Z. The other one that I pulled from the schematic is a Series X. So uh, good thing I pulled that out because that's going in a bucket too. We have some sand in this. That's unusual. These cases are usually pretty good like that. And I guess it is a two-piece because it looks like this little silver piece here is also part of the equation. So the schematic was right. Take a picture. Notice how that comes. And you had to remove that because we have a third screw here. So if you didn't remove that plastic piece, well, you're uh, probably going to snap that plastic piece. 
four side plate screws. We got two gold ones that are showing. We have two uh, silver ones that are not. I'm going for the silver ones first because I want to see if there's a different size between the two silver ones. Sometimes there is, and sometimes they're, uh, they're the same. And if one is shorter than the other, I want to make sure that I identify that so when I go to put it back together again, I know which one gets the short screw. If you like these kinds of videos, I would ask you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, I would ask you to hit the notification button. That's going to tell you when I post the videos. So then you'll be able to pick those that you want to watch. Uh, I do try to post frequently. And uh, posting frequently does help kind of keep everybody sane in this craziness with the pandemic. So I've been trying to do that in kind of in unison with the folks that are, that are providing the care, trying to give them some relief uh, to their daily grind. Those four screws are all the same size, but the two silver belong hidden. So that's where you want to notice where that's going on. We should simply be able to pull this off now. I'm just examining the case just to make sure that there isn't anything hiding somewhere that I wouldn't know. Notice that there is a stud that comes through here on the case. So when you go to reinstall, you need to make sure that that stud is embedded properly. And uh, we can take this off at this point. So we have an interesting little anti-reverse trigger sitting here. And uh, folks need to know that when, uh, when they go to reinstall that uh, this is going to need to line and it appears that that line is going to be in this groove here right here so that when we go to reinstall we're going to look through the hole in this this gear like this I'm going to make sure I'm going to check the schematic but we're going to look through the hole there make sure that that tag is there and then we're going to make sure that it goes to the, uh, the inside of this. That's uh, kind of the way this is set up. In internally, this is a very easy uh, fishing reel to uh, work on. And um, what you want to do on this one is just make sure that your worm drive is uh, lubricated. And uh, we should have a pawl under here. And under that pole, uh, we'll take this off, we can pull the axle shaft, and under that pole there will be uh, another uh, oil point. So let's go ahead and take that off. I'll take those two gears and side plates and get them into the box. And again, pictures help on this, particularly if you're not familiar with it. So I'm looking at the schematic kind of as a... Um, Trying to find out which way that little orientation on the tag goes, and it's really not telling me. So I'm going to play that one by kind of best guess. Now that little piece that just fell out there is a spring load for this uh, this little lever here. Just an uh, important point to note. That's another reason why the schematic helps if something jumps out of your reel. You kind of identify it. Now this one's sort of right between a micro screwdriver and a regular screwdriver. So I'm going to step down a little bit. You don't want to strip these threads on this. So it doesn't hurt to just back it off and go for the, the smaller one. You'll feel it if you keep getting a skip. Also notice there's a spring here that uh, keeps tension onto the override here. You want to make certain on this that you recognize the orientation on that spring. And if it does shoot, you know which way to go. Well, there's one reason why the, the screw is a little bit hard. They do have a Loctite on that. So we do want to pull that. If you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, and you're just kind of stuck maybe on a reassembly of a reel or taking apart a reel, or, or maybe you have a question about what we just did here with the uh, trying to get the sand out of the reel or whatever it might be, 
If you uh, leave that question in the comments section, I'll try and answer it. If I if I know the answer, I just got one today on how to preserve a cork handle on a fishing reel. I had no idea, uh, but one of our viewers was kind enough to uh, to answer that. And uh, thank you. So the forearm is by itself a whole lot smarter than I am, and we do appreciate the uh, the input there. Here's your Paul. You want to check this, you want to make sure that it's cleaned, get the dirt out of it. You want to make sure that the shoulders on this are clean as well. So you just kind of run something across there to pick up any of the excess dirt or grease. Notice on that <clears throat> carrier that I had there that uh, there was a little washer that goes over the point of this pole. So while I have all of this stuff going here, I'm going to reinsert the pole, put a drop of oil on that. I'm going to get that pole seated into the groove. And you'll know you're in the seat by when it comes down. And then you have that little washer here. It's kind of hard to see. It's hiding in the grease. But I'm going to take that little washer and put that right over there so that I don't lose that. I'm going to hold that assembly now and pull up to get the axle shaft out. Sometimes you need a little persuasion. There's a gap between the block and the axle shaft, so I'm going to just gently use my screwdriver as a wedge to kind of give me an assist there so that I can go behind that and just get that little bit of dried grease that's back there. And make sure that we get that done. Okay. Same idea with the axle shaft, clean that. I'm just using a, a, a 4 steel wool, which is a very fine steel wool. Clean that axle shaft. It's going to go into my bucket next. And then the last thing we're going to try and do, let's see if we can get the collar out to remove this. And again, they have screwdrivers that can be used either flat bladed or Phillips head and I find the initial turn when I have a screw like this works better with a flat bladed screwdriver and then uh, if necessary I generally like to switch to the Phillips head after that. I got one screw here that I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to clear. We are. Perfect. We'll get that one out of the way. So we're not going to need to disrupt the uh, anti-reverse override pieces. So we'll get that out of the way, this out of the way, and we should be able to pull that whole assembly up at this point, which we are. I'm going to leave these right here because we're going right back in with those. I just wanted to check. Now they they tell me on this reel that this has got mag sealed bearings, and what they're telling me from that is is that that is a magnetic oil that is supposed to facilitate the uh, the performance of the bearing and keeping stuff out of it. So I'll trust them with that. I don't know what this metal is. It's a black metal, but I don't... Most metals are not black, so I'm not sure what it is or if it's just simply an aluminum gear, possibly. I'm not sure. I'm just checking the grooves. We should do this on every one that we do with a, uh, a pinion gear. And uh, just make sure that there's no dirt in there. And put some oil onto the bearing itself. Now, this is not magnetic oil, but... Uh, this is not the new condition of the reel either, right? I'm going to take pen precision reel grease. I don't care what grease you use. Okuma makes a nice grease. Uh, there's other greases out there. Most manufacturers will supply a grease. Most manufacturers are not in the, the lubrication business, so they've got somebody else making that grease for them. But regardless, uh, get the grease onto the uh, shaft and use a fishing reel grease for that. Now, I wasn't paying much attention while I was doing all that talking. I know I have a collar here that's um, not identically shaped. I could go back to my pictures. I'm doing that with the video. But I do notice I have two studs here and I have a little uh, kind of a bump there. So I'm thinking that this is going to go like this. And if I had a question, I would go back to my video, stop it, and say, whoa, okay, let's go back and 
make sure we get that right. In this case, we're right. And now it's time to put those three screws in. That's why I left them right on my desk here. But it's uh, it's not advisable to leave things on your desk if you're going to be working over a period of time. Like if these were the first three case screws I took out, you certainly wouldn't want to leave them there because you're going to be doing an awful lot. You've seen how I've put paper towels here to, to get the grease off and do some other things. Well, things happen. And uh, if you're not careful, you're going to wind up knocking those parts around. And I would, I find that I'm good with the paper towel, uh, uh, with the uh, parts tray as my source for where I hold things. You don't have to use a parts tray. I've seen people that have laid the parts out in the uh, the series and how they took them apart. That's cool. I mean, whatever works for you. I've seen them lay, lay them on paper towels. That's never worked for me. Uh, but uh, whatever organization you want to use, that's fine. I just put some oil onto the bearing, and I'm also going to put some oil onto where that paw was. This one's got light grease on the worm gear. I generally do not grease worm gears, but this is an internal worm gear, so it should not get the dirt and grease and grime that uh, would get trapped in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do what they did and do that, uh, that piece. Now I'm going to grab that axle shaft and go ahead and put that back in. So overall, I like the reel. It's nicely constructed. I think the real new sells for around $140 or so. I'm not quite certain. It's been a little while. I don't uh, don't personally own one of these. I haven't purchased one. I don't have uh, the pits or the like that uh, I would use them in. But I do understand they're nice for long casting. And uh, a lot of a lot of fans of these types of reels, and big time fans in uh, Europe. These uh, work well. There's two sides to this little connector, if you didn't tell by the grease that was on it from uh, when you reinstalled. This has got a flat finish, it's got a mild taper to it. The mild taper faces out so that it can accept the two screws that we took out that hold the cross, uh, cross wind gear in place. Next up then, we're going to grab our tapered screws and we're going to get them back in place. I'm going to try to get them back in place. Mean small screws don't work out. As many of you know, I'll put a little grease on there to kind of act as the glue. Get that first one in before I tilt everything out. There's a, if you have the two and you have that luxury, leave that one in there. Because if I turned that out and that plate came out and that small washer came out and some of the other things, well, you might have a disaster in waiting on your hands. So get that first one done. Now, I never recommend light uh, Loctite on fishing wheel screws or parts. Uh, if you have something that's loose and you do that, I know some of the manufacturers put the cool Loctite in there. This one's got the red, which usually means you can't get it out without heat. Uh, but uh, I'm not quite certain what they were using or not using there. But uh, that's uh, a little bit immaterial. I don't recommend it. The reason why I don't recommend it is the next guy in may not be able to get that stuff out. All right, if that's you, well, you can uh, do what you like. If you're the next guy in, then uh, good luck. I hope it works out for you. But I've had too many cases that have been uh, Loctited in with uh, side plate screws or the like. They wanted to, to keep them from falling out in boat vibration, and you couldn't get the case open. So, lost cause sort of a thing. All right, good amount of grease onto the teeth. I checked those teeth. They were clean. A little bit where the bearing is going to go in the back. Now I've got that hole, and I'm thinking that that hole again, I'm thinking that the paddle side here, the flat side, belongs in this groove. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for right now. And if I did that right, we'll, we'll be in good stead. Next up, then, I've got two things going here. I want to oil the bearing on the side case. I want to get that spring. And that little override goes underneath. So that's going to sit in a case like this. It's going to work like that. And the spring is actually going over the stud here on that little uh, uh, piece that's going to control the rotor. So this is kind of an interesting setup. I'm 
just trying to think to myself. I think it goes, you gotta get that into the groove. You gotta come over the top of that little thing. And nest it. Let's just make sure that we're doing this right. I wanna make sure that I have the clearance. Yeah, we have the clearance there. This is just one of those annoying little things that they do for fun. Whoever they is. And if you can't see it, it's because I'm kind of playing around with this. But I do expect to get it correct. And I did. So here's your case. You can see that that's going to ride inside the case. That's on the stud. There's your spring. And it's riding on the stud of that arm there. So just let me go to put this case on now. I'm going to try to reset. I want to get out. We've oiled that bearing. Here's that stud that we had talked about before. And here's that groove that this piece is going to ride in right up here. So let's let's hope for the best. Get it over the one side. I got a snap. I like snaps. And we're on. So there you go. Here's that stud. The case is in. And we're ready to reassemble the bottom part of this wheel. Remember what we said about the steel screws? They go where you can't see them. I think they're steel. They may be stainless because when I was coming out with the screwdriver, it wasn't holding it. That screwdriver has a magnetic tip. Now we're going to just continue to put the bottom on here. This is where a parts tray is helpful because you can look into your parts tray, you'll, you'll get a little mental note about uh, what you've done so far and you'll look in there and from time to time you'll see well, that what's, what did I leave in there for example uh, and, and hopefully everything you left in there is future as opposed to uh, something that maybe you went in and reinstalled, thought you did it and then uh, oops have one of those moments where you said that didn't work out quite the way I thought it did. I didn't install this piece or that piece. And uh, you go back and uh, reset. So overall, pretty interesting reel. Certainly interesting in design and concept. Nicely done. So before I do anything more now, I want to turn the pinion gear and make sure everything is working. There's no sense to put different pieces and parts back together on this reel. If you don't see the worm turning, if you don't see the axle shaft going up and down, and all of the other stuff. I also want to move that axle shaft down to the bottom of the stroke, like I'm doing here. Because when we put the rotor on that deep socket, it has to clear in order to get that, uh, that nut down. And remember the next piece up then is this uh, little shield here. Kind of goes in like that. And then I have that other shield in the bucket of water here because that had the sand in it. And sand, when you put the, the stuff in the water, sand goes right to the bottom. It just, uh, it's heavier than the water, I guess. It generally falls out of the pieces. Now we got a nice clean bottom here without the, uh, the sand in it. So that's the next piece up. But there's a tab on here. It's always interesting to note these things come with tabs. And if you're, if you're rocking and doing something a little bit about abnormal there, one of the problems you're going to have is you're going to snap those tabs off. So you need to be very careful about how these go back on. And you want to make sure that it's seated and don't force anything. Because if you start to force something, you're liable to break that side plate. Or the case, or the trim ring, or the bump guard, or whatever's there. All right, bottom of the reel then is, is pretty much done. We're going to go ahead and do the rest and then we're going to pick those pieces up that, uh, that came with the sand. We'll make sure that those are cleaned out and uh, we'll move on. So here's the anti-reverse piece. Before we do that anti-reverse stack, remember we had that little trim ring that goes in there. It's a Teflon ring. You do not need to service an anti-reverse bearing 
unless you have an issue with it. Do not put oil on that. Uh, just leave it as it is. This is a friction driven anti-reverse. If you put oil in there, you reduce the friction and you reduce the effectiveness of that anti-reverse. So please, if you don't uh, need to take it off, don't take it off. This has got the override on it, which we tripped. I'll bring it back to make sure that it sets properly, and it does. And now you're ready for the rotor up top. And uh, the only thing I can do before I go clean out the rotor up top then is to clean out a little bit behind that case there with some of the grease that was on my glove. Transfer it over. And then we can go put the handle back on. The handle screw on this side. And then we're going to go over to the faucet. We're going to make sure that all of that sand is out of those pieces. If I need to go to an ultrasonic cleaner, I will. And I will make sure, regardless, that we get all of that sand out so that it doesn't affect the performance of the reel. All right, we're going to pause this again a second time, and then we'll come back and we'll make sure that the uh, balance of this video shows you how to complete the assembly. Okay, well, that technique and just the time that we had put that in the water, and there's no uh, time elapse here, it was just soaking while we were doing the rest. All of that sand is now removed from the bowl of the uh, spool. All of that sand is off the rotor. There's just a little bit of uh, dried grease in there. I'll just uh, use a Q-tip to finish that piece. And we're ready to reinstall now, sand free. So I just uh, turned that over on the side. This fell out. And if I didn't make a note that that uh, plastic side is up top, I could easily reinstall this upside down because you can see pretty symmetrical in terms of the case there. So fortunately I made that note and uh, we're on to the bowl. That's a beautifully clean bowl which had the uh, sand in it as well. That extended rotor goes in next. Now remember we took this off in a clockwise manner so this has got to go back in a counterclockwise manner. That means that you're turning towards you as opposed to away from you. And I like to start these with the with my hand just to make sure that we got it right. And let's grab our socket and turn that down as much as I can. Just gonna give it a little more snugging here. Make sure that it turns nicely. Certainly it turns nicely. I'm gonna go look for our tie down screw next. Again, me and these little screws here, so if we drop this a few times, I will apologize in advance. There's a little magnet on this uh, inside of this carrier here. I'm noticing that right there. That's going to run on the outside of the spool. I'm not a designer or an engineer. I don't know what the pieces probably has something to do with smooth but that doesn't yeah that's a metal ring all right well it's gonna do something <laughs> I think it's all about being smooth now when you put this in you can see these wings have come out that's a tensioner remember what we talked about that o-ring so when you go to put that spool on you're gonna have to rem remember that they're there you kind of have to kind of work your way around them oops see, just as I was thinking I was done I'm not done two things. I've got the click mechanism, but also I want to clean this uh, this top out here with these drag washers. And it looks like there's a few drag washers in here. I'm going to remove the spring first. I'm going to pull these drag washers out. These are felt drag washers. And there's nothing wrong with felt drag washers. I would be a little concerned in this environment with this because it was sand and sand is going to tear drag washers up and particularly felt ones. So I'm going to get all this old dirt and stuff out of there. Remember what we were saying about how water and stuff is going to get in there from time to time and uh, if it's carrying particulate in it, it's going to be a problem. Right, so we have a felt washer first. We're going to oil felt washers that keeps them the most flexible. I just put a couple of dots of oil on there. I'm going to put a metal washer goes next. And a secondary felt washer. Then we have this one that has the stack piece. 
that's going to fit in the grooves. I think, let's just go take a look here where that one belongs. This is the one that's going to hold the spool to the axle shaft. So the ones with the keyed, wow, this is not easy for me. The ones with the keys, with the rectangle shape holds the axle. The ones with the pins hold the shaft. So they alternate. And when you lock them all down between the ones that are holding the axle shaft and the ones that are holding the spool, it works. All right, second one of these goes on then. And I wouldn't worry that some of these drag washers are a little wet. The oil's still going to go in there. The water will dry, but the oil will not. Okay, and I'm out of sequence. Okay, so what happened was I had two of these felt washers stick together. Never a good idea. So we're going to repeat. We'll do the felt washer, the keyed washer, the felt washer, the eared washer. It's easier the second time around. The felt washer, the keyed washer, the felt washer, the eared washer. I'm going opposite. The first eared washer I put this way, so I'm going to the other side of the spool for the last one. Felt washer, keyed washer, spring. All right, now our top, top is done there. Very nice. We're going to continue. The next piece up then was to put that click wash, have the click in and, and ratchet so that we have spool noise. And what we said, one side's rounded, one isn't. The rounded side is pointing up. A little bit of dirt in here. Let's just mop that up while we're at it. This one goes next. And you have a little shim washer here, which holds all of that on. Then we work the spool on. Again, you've got these wings kind of flying here, so make sure that you work your way through all of that. Alright, I think we've got that on. We're going to grab our adjuster button next. Tighten that down, make sure that we're having a hold on this one. Okay, let's just finish up. The spool is tight. I'm noticing I just got a little bit here. I didn't tighten that down enough. Just check it over completely. I'm going to take my glove off now because I don't want to transfer any more of that grease as I go to clean it up. Let's make sure all the grease is off of this. Let's give it a spin. Oh, we got a piece of tape that's coming loose there. Get that out for a moment. There you go. There it is. That's the Dem uh, the Daiwa Emblem 55A big carp or pit reel. This has got a slam bail to it, the old hit the handle thing and it'll trip the bail. So what we're going to do there is we're going to put a little bit of oil onto the seams on both sides. We're also going to put a little bit of oil onto the line roller and uh, we're good to go. So that's it. That's your reel. This one's ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did, please like it. And again, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. To see more and if you do subscribe please hit that notification button so this is dennis with second chance tackle wishing everybody a great day